Good evening, everyone. Hello and welcome. Um, welcome to Royal Gorge Vineyard. We'd also like to welcome our online viewers. Um, we thoroughly believe that you can experience God's presence wherever you are because um, he is not limited and you, if you are a believer, you carry his presence with you. Amen. So um, if you haven't met me, my name's Teresa. I'm one of the worship leaders here, and it's wonderful always to see you. Um, we're just going to dive right in. We've got a special guest speaker today, and we've got um, good things going on. So will you stand with me? And um, we're actually going to start with a new song, again, never been done before here. Um, so I think what we're going to do, um, I, I know I've said this before, you may not have heard me say it before, but I am a strong advocate for only saying or singing what you truly believe and what you mean. So um, you might just want to watch the words, see if you agree with it, see if you want to proclaim that and then sing it with us. Um, the bridge, especially, of this song is very wordy. There's lots of words in it. Um, so, you know, you may know right away, yes, I believe this, and I want to speak this out and proclaim this over my life. Or you might want to see what is this really saying and think about what, what it's saying um, before you proclaim it. So... Um, there is freedom here to do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just sing the chorus a couple times for you so you can get familiar with the sound of it. And then we will sing, um, we'll just enter into worship, the whole thing. And oh, Christ be magnified. the rest of it, the whole thing. Okay, here we go. Lord, we just welcome your presence here. We know you're already here. Will you just speak? Thank you. 
want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak. into your likeness. I just pray that we would see more of you. stay there for another minute. <laughs> I don't think we're done yet. We'll just... getting a picture of, of more of who God is. Okay, I saw one hand. God wants to reveal more.
thank you, Lord, that you're going to continue to speak to us. And we just invite you to do that. We just open up our hearts and our minds to see more of who you are, um, to see you in a bigger way, to get rid of our restrictions that we've placed on you. And Lord, we just devote this time tonight to you. We thank you that, um, that it's not limited to, to even what happens here tonight, but that this goes forward throughout the week, that it goes forward, that you're always speaking to us if we just listen. So we just thank you and tune our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, kids are dismissed to go to kids' church, and then we've got some announcements for you. We're going to introduce a new program that is in our community tonight with a little film. So let's watch the little film. than four million children teeter on the brink of entering foster care. And more than 400,000 are in foster care, most of them for preventable reasons. The foster care system impacts more than you can imagine. 50% of the homeless, 60% of girls and women rescued from sex trafficking raids, and 75% of those incarcerated spent time in foster care. The foster care system is ground zero the place where our efforts will have the absolute greatest impact on our communities. And here is the good news. So many of you care about these issues. Churches and agencies and businesses, community leaders all wanna help. What we're missing is connection. The chance to collaborate and put our networks and resources together. Care Portal uses technology to make real-time care connections for kids and families in crisis. This platform helps us make the most vulnerable children our priority, which makes them the single most powerful source for uniting and healing our communities as we serve together. Here's how it works. Caseworkers with child serving agencies encounter needs of children in crisis every day. They enter vetted needs into Care Portal, which immediately makes local churches and community members who've joined the network aware, giving them a real-time opportunity to respond. This platform is designed to equip the local church to be at the point of care for these children and families in need. And it allows for the entire community to work together on any request. So whether it's one church that responds or a community of churches and businesses and individuals working together, Care Portal makes vital connections possible through an easy to use platform at your fingertips. So many of our children and families in child welfare are isolated. They don't have a support system. Care Portal can provide not only the physical needs for the children and family, but can also provide a support system and relationships. I look at the Care Portal as a platform for us to be able to do ministry uh, across denomination lines, across racial lines, across social economic lines, and the mission field is in our backyard. Sometimes, connection means meeting one need at just the right moment. At other times, connection starts life-changing relationships. When you join Care Portal, you are saying yes to connections that change lives, transform communities, and can reverse the foster care crisis in our nation. That yes makes children the priority because every child matters and what you do matters. Children have the power to change us.
We have a point person, Rachel, are you coming forward? Um, in our church. Uh, yes, it's a learning curve, but listen for a moment, and there's a way for you to easily sign up. Hi. Um, so I'm Rachel, the guitar player is my husband. Um, no, okay, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry. Um, anyway, my name is Rachel, and um, I'm the uh, point leader for this project. So I just, there's two flyers in the back of the church and a QR code that if you want to participate, just um, get that on your phone and go through the steps and then you'll be a responder. And then DHS will email me requests and then I'll shoot that out to those of you who are choosing to respond and if it's something you can help with, you can Is it working now? Right now we have a request for a dryer and car repair. Um, and let's say you want to Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, you can donate, um, help out. It's a great way to meet people. I'm really excited. It's going to be super awesome. And um, like I said, there's flyers back there. If you have any questions, just ask me, and we'll just see where this goes and how many people we can help. Okay. Thank you. Please, please know this is also on the YouVersion app, so you can go there and find the QR code and investigate and understand it even better. But don't be afraid to grab us that have been a little bit involved to get it started. Um, I, I'm still lost back in worship. <laughs> uh, can you imagine heaven with... 24-7, there's no clocks there, though. Uh, when you need jazz, it's going to come jazz. And when you need worship, it's going to be worship. He's going to meet us wherever we need it when we get there. And he can now. We just submit. So there's plenty of things happening. Um, just our regular schedule. This building has activities most days of the week if you want to engage with other people. We have bike to church coming, and, but you could bike any time, but watch for some special announcements for that. Um, for those giving, you can do it online, in the back, in the boxes. Um, we're just glad you're here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it couldn't be any better. You meet us wherever we're at. Whatever emotion we're dealing with that day or whatever need we have that day, you meet us there if we just turn to you. Thank you for being so loving and so kind. Now take these gifts that we bring to you and use them for your kingdom, for your glory. And Father, help us open our hearts tonight and hear the message that's brought to remind us more of you, that we can be more like you in this world to display your kingdom. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We, we have a, a guest speaker tonight, uh, uh, one of Canyon City's own, Benny Soto, and he will bless you. Oh, you guys are an excitable crowd. Holy moly. 
appreciate that, though. So I'm going to be walking around a little bit. Hopefully, we will capture all the sound and it won't go crazy on us. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be on video and all that. I just want to thank you for letting me uh, have this opportunity. I'm grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful that you guys are also letting your pastor go on sabbatical. Uh, I've been in ministry a long time, 26 years, some, somewhere in there. And uh, I've been in three churches, and I've never been given a sabbatical. So good on you. Man, I, I was just so encouraged by that. Way to take care of, of your shepherd when he might need that time of refreshment, which is what you guys are in. This summer, my understanding is kind of focusing on the time of refreshment and encouragement, and my message is going to sound exactly the opposite until the very end. So just know that. It's going to sound like, oh, man, he's hitting me between the eyes. But just wait till the end, okay? Um, and then hopefully I will bring it all back around and you will feel encouragement in the end. So I want you to kind of be like an armchair quarterback. You know what an armchair quarterback does? After everything's done, then they decide how to do it better. So, right? so I want you to kind of think about that a little bit. And think about how your life may look a little bit like that. All right? So uh, I want you to be an armchair quarterback. And I want you to kind of just hang in there for as long as you can until the end. All right, so I know I might be preaching to the choir a little bit, um, but hopefully it all makes sense. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles, go to there. If you have the YouVersion Bible app, go to chapter 12. We're going to kind of hang there for a little bit um, and just kind of sit there for a moment as God speaks to us through his word. Um, and so where it needs to go, where, where I think I need to go this e I'm so used to saying this morning, I almost said it, uh, this evening um, is, is, is a place where we need to talk about sometimes hard things. And maybe I don't have all the credibility with you. I've, for some of you I've just met, I totally get it. And you're going to be like, who is this guy? Who gets to tell me that? Um, really, I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I'm just trying to live my life in the way that I think God wants me to live it. Trying to do what I think he wants me to do. And then in the end, hopefully I'm found out to be kind of a faithful servant. That's all I got. So, whew, that that. I'm about to get emotional too. So, but that's, that's who I am. So my name is Benny Soto. I've been in Canyon for, I don't know, almost 14 or so years. Uh, it's been a little while. I was a pastor at Mountain View for a long time, if you know where that church is at. And then, uh, but I served in the Navy Reserves at the, at the same time. And while I was doing that, they decided to, uh, General Mattis, remember him? I don't know if you know him, but he became like the big dog. And then uh, he decided that if you're in the reserves and you haven't deployed in a five-year period of time, then why are you in the reserves? So if you didn't deploy, they were booting you out. And, it, and so you have to deploy now at minimum every five years. However, I was with special operations for the last eight years. And with special operations, there is no five years. So they brought me up, I deployed, and when I did that, I kind of handed the church off to the, to the next guy, and he kind of took over. I left. I was gone that first time for 14 months. And I came back, I was back for like maybe eight months, and they punched my number again. 
and I deployed again. I've done four deployments in the last five and a half years. And so it was kind of good that I handed off the church to someone else. And, and so, uh, so what have I been doing? So I, that care portal thing, uh, I work at DHS. Uh, I'm a caseworker there, been there uh, the last eight years. And I did that because I wanted the church to be debt free. So that's a little bit of uh, just the storyline of, of who I am. Uh, I've been married 26, going on 27. I have a girl and a boy. I'm older than I look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm ex- she just graduated college and now is in her master's program. Um, my wife is amazing because I'm a mess. <laughs> and she loves me anyway. Right? And so, um, and like I said, I'm in the Navy Reserves and I've been a caseworker for a little while. I was a foster parent, became an adopted parent, now I'm a caseworker. So I've seen all of it. And then I've been a pastor to boot. So there is not anything. And I served with a bunch of Marines and special operations on the ground in the middle of nowhere. There is nothing that you can say that would offend me or that I haven't heard already right? And at the same time I say that, there's nothing you can say or do that God hasn't seen already, right? So just think about that for a moment. There is nothing that you can say, nothing that you can do that God hasn't seen already, okay? Okay? And with his ability of just being all-knowing, he kind of already knew it was coming, right? And so it didn't catch him by surprise at all. And so just think about that for a moment. There's nothing you can say or do that he hasn't seen already. So when we think about that forgiveness, think about what that means. Connect those dots. Forgiveness, and we're a mess. Forgiveness, and we're a mess. He's seen it, done it. Now, well, he hadn't done it. (laughs) He's seen it, we've done it, and it didn't catch him by surprise. And forgiveness came anyway. Grace came anyway. Compassion came anyway. Jesus' sacrifice came anyway. Right? Righteousness came anyway. Our ability to tap into holiness came anyway. It came anyway. So as we wrestle through our lives, sometimes in our messiness, God has to kind of knock us on the head, right? One time I was in the church, um, we had this cross, it was semi-portable, and I was trying to move it a little, kind of create an angle to the sanctuary that we have had there. And when I did it, it, the cross member had touched the wall. And I was like, "Mm, I'm just moving it, but I'm not looking at what's happening above me. And I'm turning, and I'm like, come on, get in there. And I went like that real hard. And that cross member fell off and whacked me on the head. And here's literally what happened. It was like, bam, and I was like, oh, oh, man, that hurt. Okay, God, I'm listening. Because <laughs> sometimes I got to get hit in the head. And I sat there for a little while. I probably couldn't move anyway. But I sat there for a little while and said, okay, God, you got my attention. (laughs) I literally said that. And in that moment, I just sat there. And I think that's sometimes what we need to do too. Because God love, God's love compels him. I want you to hear this for a moment. 
as we go through chapter 12. God's love compels him to get our attention because of who he wants us to become. That's the end of the story, right? God's love compels him to get our attention because of who he wants us to become. So with, this, with that being said, when he gets our attention, sometimes it can hurt. This, so this is the, the hard part. And then the glory comes later. It sometimes can be painful. It can sometimes feel like suffering. It can sometimes just be hard. And so with our lives the way they are sometimes, we can connect the dots with that statement to say, is my present suffering God trying to get my attention? Is my present pain God's way of trying to get my attention? Is what I'm going through that I see as just hard God's way of getting our attention. So in Hebrews chapter 11, we hear about these just pillars of the faith. People who we would look at in scripture and say, wow, these guys just had it on the money. They were just on the ball about how to live life with God. And so a lot of theologians call this kind of the, like, the heroes of the faith, chapter 11 is just this, this pillar of, of, of what to do and how to live the way that God would want us to live. And, and because of that, verse 1 in chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, I know you've heard that verse probably a thousand times. I'm not going to go way into that verse, but I just want that to sink in for a moment in context of what I just said before that. Okay? Okay? So we already know that right away, there's going to be sin that easily may entangle me. There's going to be this great cloud of witnesses, and that I need to just throw things off that hinder my faith, my walk with God. Okay? Now, the hard part is going to be for you to figure out how do I throw those things off? I'm, going to leave, I'm just going to let you do that. That's your homework. <laughs> right? So let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He went through the pain, and the glory came later. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow worry and lose heart. Going through the pain, and the glory's coming later so that you don't lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. 
right? And you have and you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons and we can say as daughters. Right? So now he's going to this word of encouragement. I'm going to ask for you to let that sink in too. My son, my daughter, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Do not make light of the Lord's discipline. In other words, you could probably say, in the way that he might get your attention. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. So if God is not trying to get your attention while you're living the life, Think about what that might mean. Because if he loves you, at some point, I'm confident to say, you're going to be a mess. You're going to be doing something you shouldn't be doing. You're going to be living something you shouldn't be living. Right? And God, out of his love is going to get your attention. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to be hard. And it may even just be painful. Because that is what it is to suffer. That's what it is. Now, you may not hear this all the time coming out of the church... This is hard. This is hard. Living the faith is sometimes just not easy. And it could feel like a grind. And I'm sure you've heard this in a movie. The military is good at suffering. And so they come up with a phrase to counter that suffering. Embrace the... Somebody said bad. I could read her lips. But it really is embrace the suck. Because it's going to be hard. And the way you get through it is you just embrace it. For all that it might be. Right? So... My son, my daughter, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son and daughter. And now it just got a little deeper because why would I need to be punished? Just think about that for a moment. Why would I need to be? I'm not going to explore all the different things of why a human being might need to be who's trying to live the life. All I'm going to say is exactly what the scripture says. Out of God's love, you may find a moment in your journey with him where he rebukes you, punishes you so that the discipline that you might need to experience has future glory for your life. Now that's hard. That is not easy to hear. I told you it was going to hurt in the beginning, right? Right? It's it's, going to hurt. Because part of living the life, I'm reminded, I'm being flooded with a sermon right now of an African preacher who said 
because sometimes we live in Friday. What happened on Friday? Think about the Easter story. What happened on Friday? Right? A whole lot of suffering. And we forget. Now, I know church is here. It's Saturday. So it might not sound completely right. But we forget that Sunday is a coming. And we live in Friday. Now, for a moment, we might need to, according to this. We might need to. Jesus had to. He had to go through what Friday did to him. He had to. Because of what Sunday was going to bring. I almost want to do it. So don't live in Friday. Because Sunday is a coming. Right? I know it. You got to get excited about that. But I know I hit you too hard, maybe, so it's hard. It's hard to get excited. But that's part of the journey. That when God is doing this, part of what you can know without a shadow of a doubt is that God is doing it because of how he loves me. And that should be powerful. So if you're the armchair quarterback and you're like, yeah, but you know what I'm going through right now? Yeah, okay, I get it. But after, what will it be like? Right? Think about the after. I know, I know, you might not be seeing the light of the tunnel. I get it. But it's going to be coming. Right? I know, I... I know, pastor, you're saying, but, but tomorrow, you know how hard it's going to hurt? I, Sunday, future glory, God's love is a coming. So endure hardship in verse 7 as discipline. And if we put the context of discipline in light of what was just said, discipline is love where God is trying to get my attention for the future glory of who he wants me to be. And isn't that what we're trying to do here? Become the Christ follower that he wants me to be? I mean, isn't that what we did when we said, In the suffering of my sin, I reached out to God and I asked and made a confession of my faith to say, take away these things from me. Take it away. Lift that burden from me so that I could get his love with all that it is. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as a son or daughter. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate. If God chooses not to get your attention, then where is his love for you? I don't even want to think about that. Right? But if God is trying to get your attention, then his love is completely there for you. 
you just may not be feeling it. You just may not be feeling it. Okay? Moreover, we have all had human fathers who discipline us, and we respect them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and what? And live. Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. Wow. You mean, wait a minute. Think about this. You mean the pain? Do you mean the, the hurt? Do you mean the punishment? Do you mean the hardness of what I may be going through is so that I can experience God's holiness? I'll let you answer that. No, I can't. Yes! <laughs> That's what it means. You're going to experience his holiness. You just got to keep going. You just got to press on, just like it said in the beginning, run with perseverance. It's coming. Friday is where it hurts, but Sunday is filled with glory, holiness, righteousness, forgiveness, compassion, mercy, God's love. That's what Sunday is. A lifting of all of that. And it stays with Friday. Whew. Verse 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. God, in other words, I'm going to use kind of like my military background. There's a lot of things we do over and over and over and over again. And then when we get so sick and tired, we're doing it again and again and again and again to produce in that training muscle memory. So that what we do will seem automatic. What if the training, if I take that word, the training that God is trying to do in your life in verse 11 is for you to produce muscle memory of how to be Christ-like, where you don't even have to think about it. The holiness will just burst out of you, right? People who will walk by will be like, yeah, I know, I got to get to church. And you didn't even say a word, right? Yeah, I know, I know, I got to talk to Jesus. And you're, you know what I mean? What if that could have happened? All I know is God is trying to train you. Therefore, verse 12, Strengthen your feeble arms <laughs> and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. There's a purpose. The refreshment should be, if you're hopefully staying with me, if you stay over here on Friday, I, I, I don't know how you make it through life, right? 
And think about where people are at. People who haven't experienced Christ's love are stuck in Friday. People who don't know that forgiveness that comes from the cross, in the end, are stuck in Friday. When we look out at the world, many of them are trying to do life on Friday. Right? No wonder when it comes to literally on Friday night, they got to go have a beer. Right? Think about all of that. They got to get away. I'm not saying that beer is wrong. I'm just saying. Right? But think about the implications. It's because they're trying to live in Friday. And I would rather you and I as we go through this, fix my eyes. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's hurt. Oh, man. Feels like I'm in the fire. Oh, I know. But I'm fixing. I'm running my race. I'm fixing my eyes to what is over here. Be the armchair quarterback now. Oh, I would rather have this. And if I have this, but I got to go through that. Whew, okay. Right? Right? I mean, isn't that what we're saying? If, if I can get this, if God is going to let me experience this, but I got to go through that, I don't know. I would rather get that so that, I'll, uh, so that I then am trained to be what? Holy. So as the band comes up. As we think about the possibilities of why you may be hurting right now, of why you might be experiencing some pain right now, of why you might be suffering right now, of, of, of why you might be over here, this Friday thing, right? Because this is also where Jesus was. Jesus was over here, right? I want to be like him. And where did he go? Well, he went over here. And then, then I get to go, right? I get to be a part of, I get to experience, but I got to go here to get there. So as they play, as I pray, as you think about how to now be right now an armchair quarterback and just get a glimpse. I am asking God that he give you a glimpse of this, even though right now you might be over there. Play something. <laughs> right? So bow your heads with me. Just kind of sick. I'm reminded of scripture. Where in Revelation you see this over and over again. There's a little mantra of how the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. And he says, Let them hear who can hear what the Spirit says. So I'm in a real way asking for you to hear just for a moment what the Spirit is saying. And as they play, and it gets louder and louder, 
And as we sit here, let the Spirit speak. Let Him give you a glimpse of your future glory. Let Him give you a glimpse of who God wants you to be.
to stick around, stick around. For those of you who want to go, go. But go knowing this, that when you walk out those doors, do, leave Friday here. Right? Leave Friday here and walk out those doors as if Sunday was already here. Okay? Lord. 